It has been almost a full year since I last visited the Con Valley in Denham to see some of the very first bridge segments for the Con Valley Viaduct being installed. At the time a huge 700 ton bridge building machine known as a launching girder was just about to make its way over the A412 North Orbital Road. Since then the machine christened Dominique has made steady progress and has so far completed around 40% of the viaduct. Once complete, the viaduct will be 3.4 kilometers or 2 miles long and will carry the line across a series of lakes and waterways that lie between Ryslip to the east and the M25 to the west. The viaduct will rest on 56 piers, each weighing around 370 tons, and will have individual bridge spans up to 80 meters in length, with the viaduct rising up to 10 meters above the surface. The piers are being constructed in situ using giant steel moulds into which steel reinforcement is placed and concrete poured. To construct the piers a hull road has been constructed alongside the viaduct where it travels roughly parallel with the A412. However to cross the lakes to the east of Denham Green a temporary bridge has been constructed which is used to transport materials to the pier sites. The bridge segments on the other hand are being made off site in a purpose built factory that has been constructed alongside the M25 at the northern starting point of the viaduct. The segments are transported to Dominique using SPMTs or self propelled modular transporters and are actually transported along the completed sections of the viaduct. So far around 450 bridge sections weighing up to 140 tons have been installed with approximately 1.5 kilometers of the viaduct completed so far. To install the bridge segments Dominique lifts the segments from the completed part of the viaduct and then moves them to the next section to be constructed. Segments are installed in pairs which have glue applied to them to help keep the bridge together. The bridge itself will be reinforced using the post tensioning method which involves threading steel wires through holes within the bridge segments. The wires are then pulled at each end to tension them and then anchored into place to hold the segments together. I believe each pair of segments are tensioned together which helps keep them in place until the full bridge span has been completed. The best example I could think of to demonstrate post tensioning was one of those wooden children's giraffe toys which I think demonstrates the principle rather the well. On the day that I visited Denham another section of the bridge was under construction just to the southeast of Dominique's current location. This section will take the line over Moorhall Road and is being constructed using a crane rather than using the launching girder. The reason for this is so that the road can be closed during the school holidays when there is less traffic with the road closure taking place between the 28th of July and 18th of August. On the day of my visit two segments were being lifted into place but unfortunately I missed the first lift and didn't have time to see the second lift. To construct the section over Moorhall Road a 600 ton crawler crane was used to lift these segments which each weigh 120 tons. The segments were delivered to the site on a low loader which travelled from the precast segment factory to Moorhall Road via the Hull Road and temporary bridge that runs alongside the viaduct. It is estimated that Dominique will catch up to this bridge section in September or October of this year, at which point the launching girder will pass over the top and then continue to construct the remainder of the viaduct, which will finish just beyond Harville Road. From there, the line will run at ground level before reaching the western tunnel portal of the Northolt Tunnel, which will take the line underneath northwest London until it reaches Old Oak Common or more accurately the Victoria Road crossover box located just to the west of Old Oak Common. Now that a large part of the viaduct has been constructed it is possible to see bridge fairings being installed on the edge of the structure. The precast concrete fairings will not only help to reduce noise pollution from the passing trains but I think adds to the aesthetic of the bridge which already in my opinion looks elegant given its sheer size. It was great just to see how much progress has been made since the last time I visited and the completion of 1.5 kilometers is a superb achievement. And who knows, the next time I visit Denham, the viaduct may be fully completed. 